Prison in Haiti is like a living hell. Armed gangs demanding the Prime Minister's resignation have attacked two prisons, allowing thousands of inmates to escape and leaving dozens dead and wounded. Thousands are locked up without trial and face conditions described by the United Nations as subhuman. The situation here is probably the worst that I've ever seen. I want to try and explain what I'm seeing. There are around 600 people in small cells. One cell has 196 people. We want to help the people here. We want to help make their life better. We're here with so much food, so much water. You can see right here, there's water that they're distributing and they're bringing in the food even now. But I'm telling you, it's only for a day. It's only for a moment. They have to get water brought in regularly. Some of them, they haven't had water in five months. They haven't bathed. Sickness has run rampant. This is the worst conditions I've seen. I'm telling you, it's shocking, it's heartbreaking. We're not here to expose Haiti. We're not here to talk about the government. We're not here any for any other reason than to just help the people. Today, I want to take you inside the four walls of a typical Haitian prison. The conditions that we witnessed while we were in that Ghanaive prison were beyond explanation. But so many people are still there, stuffed in cages, hundreds of people in one cell. Unable to take a bath properly, they're forced to bathe in shifts, sleep in shifts. A prison designed for only 200 houses, about 700. But in today's video, I want to show you the suffering of Haitian prisoners. Because at the end of the day, we are all human beings worthy of being treated like a human being. No one deserves to be treated like a dog and stuffed inside of a cage, forgotten. Prisoners don't even get to eat unless someone brings them food. Their families forced to come and feed them every day. If you don't have a mom or a dad or sister or brother, you're forced to make friends and hope that their family will bring you food as well in a country where everyone is hungry. Follow along as I take you inside of a Haitian prison and show you the suffering that so many are facing. Some of them like die in the prison like because they don't eat, you know? Like in a year, so many of um, prisoners can die because they don't feed them. Yeah, not even in here on Leeds, a cap Asian and around the country. Hey everyone, we're in Gwena Eve. And we're preparing for our prison ministry here in the area. Uh, we're with this lovely family who's taking time to uh, prepare this food. Um, we've got chicken. We've got a bunch of different things cooking. Um, and it's an opportunity that God has given us to go into the prisons to preach and to share the love of Christ. Uh, the government, like many things in this country, uh, is not doing enough to take care of the prisoners. They don't get fed very much. They don't get fed well. There's many times where prisoners die from mal malnourishment. We've already been to the gang filled areas. Now we're gonna go into the prisons where they really, really need to see the love of Christ and the light of God shown. Um, thank you very much and God bless you guys. The personal, the police and the prisoner in total will be over 700. Wow. Yeah. For Gonaive, actually. Yeah. Because um, for Capetian, it will be more than that. Yeah, I think it's 1100. 1100, for Capetian, yes. Yeah. So this is amazing. Thank you so much for no letting problem. us be a part of this. No Such a blessing. So we've arrived at the prison, and <clears throat> the wall, the gate is completely broken off the hinges. Mm. Nobody's at the outer perimeter. And you can instantly see the decay that has taken place. sight to behold all right so we just drove into the prison walls that's where it gets real i don't think they're going to allow us to film inside though big walls barbed wire constantino wire and the smell of sewage mm -hmm. all, all together we're gonna stop Kalua. All together we're gonna stop calling yeah them. wash your hands and keep the prison clean that's what he says if this is the toilet for the guests 
What do you think the toilets are for the prisoners? I'm alright again, like a child again. Now the universe is a wonder. I don't care where we go, don't care what we do. As long as you're with me and I'm with you. I couldn't see colors, it was all in gray. Till you showed me every shade. Now I feel like summer. Now we had a situation where um, the man, they usually call the major of the prison, that's the name, Major. So he's been an, at the prison like for a long time. He's like more important than even the police because he's the one giving orders. We had a situation where uh, Philip was trying to take videos, not even of the people around, but just the food. And then he was the one telling us that we cannot take any video even for the food. Uh, even the police, they said that we can, and he said, no, we cannot. And then that caused an uh, anti situation. So now we know that he's, uh, he's the one, you know, taking control of everything we have to do. He's the one who has to give orders. And he's that, a prisoner. Um, and he's a prisoner. We can tell, like, the situation is dangerous because whatever we have to do, we have to ask him and pay attention um, how he's going to react and all that. Yeah. We're just going to do whatever we have to do as quick as we can so we can leave. Yeah, yeah. very dangerous for us. It is. Now, they say that we cannot take any videos or pictures because the prisoner now, they are so violent. Uh, last night, they killed a gang leader and go naive. So, um, people are planning to come to the prison and break it so that's one of the reasons why they won't let us take any video because the prisoner they are so violent right now so the situation is like intense we're being told that everyone in the prison today is being very violent so we have to be very sensitive we have to leave our bag our phones everything in the car before we go in we have so much food to give them uh, and yet even still it's so tense here you can feel it you can see it there's decay outwardly everywhere some of the worst conditions of squalor I've seen in, in, in Haiti. Uh, it's not good. These these guys, they don't eat. Uh, there's no safety. You could be killed at any moment. The leader we were able to, after he uh, he grabbed me earlier because I was filming some of the food and, and I offended him, I guess. So because of him grabbing me, I was like, hey, don't touch me. I, I like directly confronted him, but he didn't understand what I was saying, but he knew that I got offended. We ended up going to him and talking to him a little bit. And now uh, he's like, hey, I'm gonna be with you guys. We prayed for him. He said he couldn't give his life to Jesus right now because of his situation. But you hear that so often. His daddy's a pastor. Uh, he gets out in 23 days. And uh, he's actually a, a, a man of, weirdly enough, he's a man of quite a lot of importance here. Uh, I've heard he's even more important than the, 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 the workers, the guards here. Uh, he has a lot of say, a lot of pull. He's able to walk around freely, have a cell phone. We can't even have a cell phone. So the situation is really kind of insane. Uh, after yesterday, with our, our truck getting mobbed and our food taken, uh, the, the food that we were distributing, our driver left us. So that's even a concern for us today is if we need to escape, if something's happening and we need to get out fast, how are we gonna be able to get to our vehicle when this guy seems to disappear all the time? So that's a little bit of a worry. Uh, there's so much going on. There's so many variables. Uh, they will not let us film in the prison for obvious reasons. Here in Haiti, people hate being filmed. And so we do not even want to take any risk of going to the prison, filming anybody and causing violence. We have to stay quite a lot of ways away from them. This is, as weirdly as, as it sounds, this is a really dangerous thing that we're doing today. Uh, it seems like everything we do here in Haiti is really dangerous, but it, it really is. Uh, anything could happen. So we're gonna go there with a the spirit of peace, preach love, try and calm them down through just the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And um, we were told that a lot of people would be coming up with their papers, asking for money, asking for favors, things like that. But we're just gonna try to direct them to Jesus, give them hope, help them to cling to God. We can't help everyone. So uh, man, condition continues here in Haiti. This is our last day in Ghana Eve. Tomorrow we go to Cape Haitian. God bless you. Wait, I gotta go, now is the time. All right guys, so phones off. All the electronics are going in our bag. Our bag's staying in the truck. This is crazy, absolutely crazy. When we walked into the prison walls, we were overwhelmed in our senses by the smell of sickness and disease. Our bodies told us that we should flee. 
but instead we overcame the heat and the stench that choked out our senses. And we stood before those hundreds of men and we preached the gospel with power and conviction, testifying of the goodness of God, even in the midst of such squalor and darkness, hopelessness and despair, God could shine his light. And so we went there with a message and we saw so many reach out for prayer. We saw so many desperate for a touch from God. Since we can film um, the entire cells, but we just have access to one, um, actually this is the condition they are living in. We are begging for to have this access to film, so we praise God for that. This one, there was 196 people. And the entire prison was made for only for 200 people. And, and they have over. almost 600 people. And they, I think they have two, three, four, almost like seven cells. So yeah, so this is the condition. We heard so many stories of men coming from other countries. As soon as they entered the country of Haiti, they were detained and sent to prison, never given a trial or a court date or ever were able to stand before a judge. There is no justice in Haiti. As y'all can see, this is, you know, this is not even in a good condition. It doesn't work. Um, yeah, as y'all can see, it's really hot. It's really hot. Even when, if, even when you go close to that um, place, it's really hot. You can feel how hot it is. There's so many people, they are sick. There's cholera, um, tuberculosis, a lot of, you know, sickness in this place. There are things in life that you just can't understand until you've been there in mm -hmm. person, until you've experienced it, you've seen the conditions of the people. I've been to several prisons around the world. I've never seen something like this. People who are lacking in such basic resources. Many of the workers were not given the equipment or the provision that they needed to do their jobs properly. The guards having to sleep on broken down beds and mattresses out in the prison yard. Everyone hungry. Yeah, I just, I just asked the guy uh, why this bed is out here. What is it for? And then he said it's for the police to sleep on at night. Whoever isn't, you know, supposed to stay and watch over the prison at night. Yes, you sleep here. Look at this. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. I just want to show you even the office of the leaders here who are overseeing the prisoners that don't have even the most basic equipment and supplies. This uh, filing cabinet has been broken for only God knows how long. They have The water system has been down for months. People can't bathe. It's, uh, it's really just conditions of squalor here. Uh, the, the warden here has uh, uh, put in a request to have a door put here so that when the prisoners they riot because of the lack of water, the lack of them being able to even take a bath. You know, that's going to cause people to become angry. There's riots from time to time because of that. And then the warden here becomes a prisoner himself. He can't escape these conditions, doesn't even have a door to get out. There's one exit in, one exit out. It's really just um, a situation of so much lack. There's so much resources that need to be pumped into these prisons. And this is just one prison. That's why we're here. We're trying to help to make this situation better for not just the prisoners, but for those who work here. And uh, that's why we're here today to help in whatever way we can. So thank you. We just give this to them, but they don't care about how they will, you know, they don't provide gas. So, um, the generator? Yeah, the generator. And so they don't have any, they have it, but they don't have any way to use it? No. No, so they, they usually, 24, yeah, it's, it's you say that it was supposed to work like 24, 24, 7, but it's just sometimes when people have a good heart, they can come here and give one gallon or two gallon, and then they can, you know, provide. It provides electricity? It to the prison, but other that, other that, it's just, um, it's just, um, you know, out of luck. Yeah. That's the only one that has a These are the jugs for the gasoline here at the prison. They have a generator that the government provided for them, but they never have fuel to use it. That should be providing power, electricity, that will at least enhance the quality of life a little bit. But 
The problem is a car doesn't run if it doesn't have fuel in the same way it works for a generator. You have a generator that can provide electricity, but uh, never any gasoline. Okay. So, uh, this is, they're all empty. It's just uh, a graveyard of gasoline cans. When, when the generator is active, mm -hmm. this water can, can um, come out from this place and then go straight to the prison so the, they can have it to take a shower, to drink, all that. Yeah. So they want to take a shower like that. Some of them drink it. Yeah. I know I keep saying this. Uh, but one of the craziest days of my life, going to a place that uh, has conditions that you can't even imagine. And so uh, we're taking with us three or four gasoline jugs because they have this generator here. And if we can fill them up, bring them back, uh, it will at least allow them to have power uh, in the prison for maybe a day, two, two days. Whatever it is that we can do to help, we're going to do that. So we're going to fill up some gasoline jugs. Amazing day, but heartbreaking. A lot of people just staring at us once again with those eyes of please help me. And we are just so powerless to do anything of real substance. Uh, but one thing that we can do is, um, you know, put our hands to the plow and provide some things for them that will at least ease their suffering. It doesn't matter what these guys have done. It doesn't matter if it's murder. It doesn't matter if it's anything worse than that. No one deserves to live like the people that we've seen in this place. People who have been here five, six years, they don't even know what they've done. They don't know the crime they've committed. Now, obviously we know some of these guys, they're not gonna be honest, but there, we were even told by those who are working here, providing security, the warden of the prison, they told us, so many people here uh, committed no crime. They're not going to have a court date. They're not going to be able to stand before a judge and plead their case. They're just here. And they don't know how long it's going to be. They don't know when they're going to get out. The future is so uncertain. So we were able to go in, preach a message for 20, 30 minutes or so. So many people received the message with hope, uh, lifted their hands, prayed with us. We're going to do what we can. But... Uh, this is, I'm afraid to even say it, but I, I think this prison is just one of many, many prisons just like this throughout this country. So I'm going my Jesus. And then you know the thing is, like, whenever, if, if people want to bless us, I think we have to find a way, like, to find someone that we can trust. If we cannot come here, to take care off of the, those things, we have to find someone that we can trust, that can take care of all this. Because most of those people, I don't trust them. I'm telling you, like definitely for myself, if I want to bless them, you know, on my like personally. Yeah. I will. I would have to come here and stay here like for three months and four months, whatever I have to do. I will make sure that you know whatever I give, whatever money I give, like go into whatever I pay for. Right. Exactly. You know. So. I was just informed by one of the gentlemen that's here with us, that uh, the one guy in the prison who was so insistent on receiving a Bible, who said, please really bring a Bible back to me. I really need a Bible. That his name is Peter Richard. And we were informed that he's one of the most dangerous guys in the whole prison. So I truly believe that, uh, that God has a heart for reaching those uh, who need to be reached the most. So we're gonna believe in the power of God to move in Peter Richard's life, you know, hopefully God can do something amazing inside of him uh, so that people can see if, if God can reach Peter Richard and change his life and people around him can see the transformation of his life, how many more by a domino effect could be like, wow, look at what God has done and want what Peter Richard has. So we're going to believe, we're going to hope that through the power of his word, we can see this man changed. 725 good per gallon, I think. So you're looking at like five, six dollars a gallon. Diesel loaded, ready to take it back to the prison. We were not able to film the preaching in the prison itself, but I just want to assure you it was very spirit filled. So many people received the message. 
uh, found hope in what we were saying. So many people begging us for help, giving us letters. It was really, really wonderful experience, although it was heartbreaking to say the least. So many people living in squalor and in just uh, inhumane conditions. It's a living hell. God is hope. And even in the midst of hopelessness, He will shine. And He will give you something to hold on to. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next one. I don't care where we go. I don't care what we do. Just as long as I'm right there beside you. I won't ever let go. I won't ever be cruel. Like the world was to me before I found you. So if I ever lose my mind, I'll be fine. Cause you're my silver lining. And if my world comes crashing down, I'll be fine. Cause you're my silver lining. Be fine.